today I'm going to talk about uh, the, the title of the talk is a little, uh, bit of misnomer, I should say. Uh, it's like it's titled Debugging Ruby. Uh, but as I started preparing the slides, I resulted what I want to talk about is how to debug or how to fix your, how to fix various problems with your Ruby applications like performance issues, memory issues. And I set out to uh, prepare my talk with that in mind. Uh, about me, uh, I go by Nick Blufide on Twitter, IRC, pretty much everywhere, GitHub. I work for Brightbox system, and uh, that's pretty much about it. And so there's a change of plans, and I'm gonna talk about CPU and memory profiling of Ruby applications. These two topics are pretty much big enough in themselves, and I'm gonna show how you can do CPU and memory prof uh, profiling of your applications so that your applications run faster and better. Okay, uh, another thing is like, uh, if you have been using 1.8 for a while, you know pretty much the tools that are there for 1.8 actually. Uh, the, the focus of this, this talk is going to be 1.9 because uh, just show of hands, how many of you are writing uh, your applications that target 1.9 today? Okay, pretty much. So the focus of this talk is going to be 1.9, non not 1.8, and we'll take it from there. And here's the funny thing. What happened was like, I'm using show off to do this presentation, and I just switched to 1.9 and just ran this show off serve, the Ruby crash, actually. So this slide was inserted as a last minute gesture, and it was like, you know, like uh, R magic was creating problem, and then I had to switch to 187 and then <laughs> that's how the slides are running actually right now. So when you're saying debugging Ruby and you, <laughs> you hit a bit of stumbling block, that's great. So uh, all such problems when you see a segmentation fault should be reported to Ruby code. It's always handy to have a debug build of Ruby so that uh, the, the backtrace that you send to Ruby code is meaningful. This is what I use typically to have a, a debug build of Ruby. It works great. And yeah, it gives great bad traces if Ruby crashes somehow. Now, uh, this, is, this is a bike, uh, Indian bike actually. It's, it's sold, I think, world over as well. It's, it's Royal Enfield Bullet actually, it's, it's called. And uh, if you look closely uh, here, you see the, the, there's a BMW logo there. I don't know how it came there. But that's the Ruby language, actually. That's the Ruby language, which is beautiful. But, but the way it stands, uh, if you're not being too careful, MRI as it stands today is a little rusty around edges, and it can throw you in trouble, actually. What we want is this. So without tooling, like without proper tooling, tools to do performance and memory uh, profiling, you cannot get this actually. No, there's no way you're gonna get there. Perfo so tooling is important. And I think that uh, Koichi, when he talked about in his 1.9.3 and future talk, he talked about uh, uh, the future versions of Ruby is going to have more instrumentation to do such things easier, to, do mem to, to, uh, to make it easier for memory and profiler writers, uh, for, for CPU and profiler writers to do certain things. And I was, yeah. So getting back, a little bit of a detour, like 1.9 is the future, remember? And uh, yeah, this, this got, like, you know, RFL scale, right? Like, just that's the, that's the way it is. And so before you rewrite, decide to rewrite your code in language X, Scala. I, I, this, this, this joke is on me, uh, not on anyone else, actually. So profiler applications, uh, that's the key. Uh, we are going to talk about the profiling tools that are available today with, for Ruby 1.9. Uh, first, the bad news. The tools that, have, that you have been using for a while for doing uh, profiling uh, of your Ruby 1.8 applications. Bleak House doesn't work on 1.9. Uh, uh, Memprof doesn't work on 1.9. Uh, Rubyprof, if you're using it for doing uh, uh, profiling, uh, only CPU profiling works. So this is the bad news if you're writing a 1.9 application. The good news is 
uh, at least CPU profiling works for Ruby pro, pro, uh, uh, using, when you're using Ruby Prof. Uh, Perf does .rb, which is written by uh, which is written by Amon, that works great with 1.9. I'm, I'm going to show you how to use Perf tools to profile your Ruby and Rails applications. Uh, Memprof uh, for for this uh, conference, I've been hacking for a while, and I got I have I have ported uh, uh, Memprof to completely work on 1.9. So hopefully I'll be releasing that as a gem and, and see how it can be merged upstream. But I'll show you how to use Memprof with 1.9. And uh, <coughs> gdb.rb, which is another project written by Aman, that can be used for memory profiling of 1.9 applications. OK, one step at a time. We'll talk CPU profiling. Uh, what does CPU profiling mean? It means uh, when your code is running, where are your hotspots? Where is your code spending most of its time? Which methods are taking most of time? That's basically is all about CPU profiling. If you know the, 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 the problematic areas, you can change the code, you can use new, you, you can put right data structures there. You have seen like, uh, you're all aware how require was so slow in 1.9.2, which was fixed trivially with a patch in 1.9.3. So choice of data structures and all that things can make a difference. But you got to know where your bottlenecks are. So th that's where CPU profiling comes in. And just a bit here that if you are a profiler writer, CPU profiler writer, you got to use this function basically which, which lets you hook into even call actually. Whenever a C call returns or, or a Ruby call gets called and it's returned, so you can time each method, how much time Ruby is spending in that particular method. A uh, bunch of profilers that, that we are going to talk about, they use this method for writing profilers. Yeah. So what are the tools that are there for uh, CPU profiling? Puff does tools.rb, first uh, uh, tool that we are going to talk about. And then second is rubyprof, third is llprof. Puff tools.rb, uh, it's based on uh, Google Puff tools project. How many have previously used Puff tools here? or puff2s.rb in one form or another. OK, perfect. Few hands, great. So Google Puff Tools is a great way to profile your C or C++ applications. But out of box, it cannot profile Ruby applications. Uh, Amon has passed uh, Puff Tools so that it can hook into, uh, it can get the Ruby stack frame and records all the data so that it shows you the, it can profile Ruby applications. Uh, it's a sampling profiler. What does it mean by sampling profiler? Is it's it's not tracking all the method calls. It takes like in, in one second, it takes it collects hundred samples and it gives you data based on that. But uh, there are modes when you, where you can turn on the uh, the method based profiling or the object profiling. That that's all config configurable. Demo time. I'm going to just search of how uh, to use this. Okay, uh, is this font not visible definitely? Okay. <coughs> no? It's good? Perfect. So uh, we are going to do uh, First thing we are going to do is we are going to uh, <coughs> So this is pretty simple program that uh, uh, This will just be once. Okay, so this is a pretty simple program that what it does is basically it wraps uh, the actual code in this block, perf tools, c colon colon cp profiler dot start, and the location where you want the profile output to be stored. Is this font visible? No? Yeah, 
just a second. Okay? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So that's all it does. Uh, let's see what the more complex code is, what that is. Yeah, so it just uh, makes a bunch of strings, useless stuff basically, to demonstrate how this, uh, this works. Now, no, I think now we are set. Now we are set, like, oh, this is again, yeah, sucks. Sorry. Okay, so let's just, I ran that program, and, uh, yeah, it, it wrote the data to this file, uh, TMP more complex. I can generate now a graph with that. Okay. Uh, so, can everyone see this? So this is what you get when you ran that, uh, when you ran your code with memprof, uh, sorry, perf tools, you get where Ruby is spending its time. It is spending about, uh, uh, the, the way to read this data is like there were 38 samples collected, like I said, uh, mem uh, perf tools is a sampling profiler, and uh, out of which four samples, it was doing garbage collection, and the way to read this, like hash this data is, uh, interpret is like, uh, this below you see is basically cumulative uh, call. So how much uh, time this procedure, how much time was spent totally in this procedure, and the, before uh, that what you see is basically how much time was spent just in that procedure. So if this procedure makes calls to another, other, other methods, that, that, won't be that, that won't be shown in the local uh, uh, sample, and cumulative shows all. So you can use this data to basically uh, do the CPU profiling of your application. Now, uh, so having done this, you will be wondering like, how to do, uh, like, this is pretty simple, this is trivi trivial. How to, how to go about uh, doing a big Rails application? How do I profile a Rails application? How do I find bottlenecks in a, in a big Rails application? So, no problem, I'm just gonna show you how to do that. Bar, a pretty you know, unimaginative name for a Rails project. So, uh, it's a Rails 3.1 project. We are gonna profile it and see where Ruby is spending all its time. Okay, so to, uh, it's a standard Ruby uh, uh, Rails 3.1 project. All it has is uh, uh, the one change that I have to, do, two changes you have to do and you can read up internet as well. Uh, you have to add this gem, Rack Profiles uh, Profiler and And then you have to, yeah. And then you have to add this to your uh, application.avi because uh, this Perf Tools profiler is a middleware that traps your request and shows you where it's spending time, where, where you, where Ruby is spending time. After you have done this, let's run the Rails. Uh, always run your Rails application in production environment when you are profiling because. Uh, the reloading, the, uh, when Rails reloads code, it can cause a lot of noise in your data. So, Rails is running now, and, and what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna use curl to, can you, can you read that? Yeah, so I'm gonna hit that uh, URL uh, and, and pass profile equal to true and how many times, how many samples I want to collect and, and the resultant graph will be saved to this file called bar underscore rails dot gif. You can see the application was hit and if I open this file, it, you can start making sense out of it where your Rails application is spending time. It, this one is pretty simple application, but for a uh, complex application which has like uh, doing a lot of SQL calls and stuff, the, the graph will be much more uh, meaningful. So this is all about Perf tools, and I hope it's good. Uh, yeah. Next tool we are gonna talk about is Ruby Prof. 
Okay? And how you can do CPU profiling with Ruby prop? A profile written in C uses RB add event hook. Again, uh, 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 perf tools does not uh, only when you using you are using method profiler of perf tools. Uh, perf tools use, makes use of this method, but but uh, Ruby prof as such uses uh, this method to track all the calls. When a Ruby call is made, when a, when that call returns, when a C call is made, when that call returns, and how much time was spent in that method, it it, it tracks all the data keeps it keeps it into into a hash map and basically you, you and gives you various outputs. You can uh, get flat output, you can get uh, uh, graph output, you can get graph HTML. And it can potentially do uh, memory profiling, but unfortunately that's not working at the moment for 1.9. Yeah, demo time for RubyProf. So, Again, this is the program that uh, is there is same. It's this is a sample program, and I'll just increase the font, uh, which basically loads the earlier, more complex OO file, and uh, uh, it starts that in that uh, you, you can start your uh, application in the block rubyprof.profile, whatever key thing you want to do, and then you can print the output. So. So we do that. Yep. And if I open this, so how many of you uh, here have used uh, Ruby Prof? Okay. So Ruby Prof is it is much older than uh, than uh, Perf tools, so that's that's cool. Uh, you can see. Uh, if you use Ruby Prof, this output is pretty much familiar. It, it again shows how much is the total or how much uh, Ruby is spending uh, time in that particular method, similar to what the way you read the output of memprof, uh, sorry, perf tools. And it, it basically gives you like which, how, how, it, it doesn't give you a graph like the way uh, perf tools does, but it tells you how the call chain happened actually. Like, like more complex start, it called hash each and it, it went down like that. So this is this is the output of uh, Ruby Prof. Again, uh, I just have a quick sample here that that shows you how to do uh, if you have a Rails application, how to do Ruby, uh, how to use Ruby Prof with that. Pretty straightforward again, and all you got to do is yeah, add this as a gem. And then run your Rails application with like this, okay? Uh, where the output should be saved and uh, start the uh, strip Rails, and it should be you should be pretty good to go. Sorry, there's already. <coughs> yeah. So. One thing to keep in mind is uh, uh, for a large application, when you are hitting like, and you're hitting with uh, five to th 6,000 requests, the profile data that, that Ruby Prof gathers, I have seen it crashing with huge amount of data, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's really not, yeah? Okay. Yeah, you can you, you can do that. Yeah, and and there's a file that comes that there's a helper that comes with uh, with Ruby Prof you can use to uh, like uh, focus particular controller and profile. You can do that as well, or you can profile it like this and hit your Elsa application and when you press Control C. The output is saved to this file. The output is again pretty much similar to. Uh, you see, the dumping the data takes a while, and for real large application, it can, it can, it can be a drag. Actually, this pro this is not the right format uh, HTML to 
to, to see this data. Uh, it's really not. So you can see it's like pretty huge. Uh, browser cannot even scroll actually. So there's that. Okay, so we uh, profile a Rails application, we profile a Ruby application, we saw what the output is. Uh, another tool that I'm briefly gonna talk about is LLProf, uh, which is a CPU profiler which was presented at Ruby Kayagi 2011 this year. Uh, I, I, I it, it's, there's, there's a bunch of problems with it. One is it's not portable at this point in time, so you cannot run it in Mac OS X. It uses some non-portable non -portable functions. Uh, another problem is like uh, it, it basically has a client server architecture of doing pro uh, profiling. The the, the 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 application with which you are running LLProf it starts a server and certain port, and uh, the it uses a protocol that it sends the profile data that can be used from a browser or from a, from a Java applet, and and you can see the profile output actually. It comes with a with its application, but unfortunately. It, it's, it's very rough, it doesn't work on Mac, and it did not even work for me on Linux, actually. So that was the problem, and I cannot really demo this one at this point in time. Maybe it will get improved and it will get fixed, and if not. Okay, so next thing we are gonna talk about is memory profiling. Why is memory profiling important for Ruby applications, or Rails applications, Ruby and Rails both? Because the, the Ruby spends, if your application is taking huge amount of memory, Ruby is spending more time doing garbage collection rather than actually processing your request. So you want to keep your processes low in memory. That's the reason you're, you, you, you definitely want to, if your application is huge in size and memory, you definitely want to do memory profiling. These days with Passenger and Unicorn, when the applications can get killed when they hit a certain memory threshold, it gets easier. Even in Unicorn, for example, has a has has uh, has a way to configure that the GC can be triggered on each request. Actually, so that that helps with things, but that's not good enough. That's not really a solution. And we are going to talk about tools that are available for memory profiling of uh, of Ruby applications. Uh, first thing we are going to talk about is what can Ruby 1.9 do for me to profile my applications out of box. Can it tell where the leak is? Can it tell? We're gonna talk about that. Then we're gonna talk about memprof, how to use memprof to detect leak, uh, leaks or, uh, or memory problems in your application. Uh, and the last tool that we're gonna talk about is gdb.rb, how I can connect gdb to a live running application and see what objects it has and whatnot. We're gonna do this. Okay, and the last is uh, Google Perf Tools comes with a, a uh, with a heap profiler, so if you compile Ruby with TCMLock, you can potentially do that, but that means that that uh, your Ruby data structures like your hash or, or classes cannot really, be shown, uh, cannot really be seen in the output. Uh, okay. So what does Ruby 1.9 provide out of box? One of the, one of the coolest thing is GC profiler, uh, GC colon colon profile dot report that you can use to uh, see how much uh, how much time Ruby is, is spending in GC. If you see uh, incremental time, it's always increasing time Ruby is spending in, in GC and the number of objects is increasing, there's definitely a leak in your application that you need to fix. Demo time. Okay, so. This is a very simple application. Uh, the, this simple application, this simple program, what it does is it leaks memory. <laughs> really. So you see here, it's just when you call start allocating, it stores all those random data in the hash map and it just leaks memory. That's all it does. And uh, we have to, before we can uh, get the report, we must enable the profiler and then you can call report and that's it. Let's run it, see what happens. Oh, 
Okay, the output is like, uh, let me show. Uh, it doesn't fit really on the screen size that we have. Uh, we are constrained with. You can see there was, in the, when the program quit before that, there was 53 invokes of GC. And, and index gives you how much time Ruby spent in the first invoke of GC. So you can see the first time, uh, first invoke Ruby spent 0.00, .00 uh, millisecond in, in the, in the, doing the GC. And the uh, object uh, size was 167 kilobytes. And the total number of objects was 9,816. The second GC, when it was invoked, Ruby spent much more time, 0 0.008, and the number of objects was 10,225. As it goes, you can see that when it reaches the 54th, uh, 53rd GC, then the, yeah, you can see the number of objects is like 2 million, and the, number, uh, and, and the time spent is 3.537 uh, uh, milliseconds. Ruby is spending significant amount of time doing uh, these, uh, the GC, and the number of objects is exponentially increasing. There's definitely a leak in your application. So this will not tell you where the leak is coming from. So you need to use other tools to do that. I'm gonna show, show how to use memprof to do that. But this definitely can tell you if there's a leak. And this is pretty lightweight that you can use. Uh, before this came, uh, people used to uh, count, uh, uh, people used to, what they used to do, they used to traverse the object space and count what each object that is there and their type and how many strings, how many, uh, how many, you know, uh, like user controller, how many user model, and they used to count it and see, okay, how many, how, how much objects are getting created on the each, each request. But the problem with that was the profile data is basically polluting your, uh, it, profile data that you're gathering is basically being shown as well when you are doing, uh, when you're walking the object space in Ruby. You got to be careful about that. And, and this is pretty lightweight and you can show you that, so use it for, doing the lightweight uh, GC profiling. Uh, Ruby also comes with uh, extension, uh, uh, but with a library call that you, you have to require, require ob space, and then it gives you these methods like count object size, count, t uh, count nodes, count t data objects. Nodes is basically Ruby stores your code as well as objects, like your if, else, everything is stored as node objects. Then t data objects is the internal data structures that Ruby uses to store data, so you can, you can get that information with Ruby 1.9. It's pretty simple, uh, probably not even. Yeah, you can see the output here, let me show you the code. Yeah, so you can just do some allocations and then you can count object size, count nodes, count t data objects. And it gives you this data, like, yeah, the T class, T module, this many objects, T string, this many objects, yeah. Again, this may not be useful for exactly pinpointing where leak is in your application. So, yeah. With, with 1.9, it was, it, things can get tricky. The last tool that we're gonna talk about is, uh, not last, sorry, the second last, memprof. What is memprof? Uh, how many of you have used memprof here before? And uh, a follower of uh, Joe D'Amato and his blogs, Time to Bleed. Okay, so it's a trampoline, it uses trampoline to hook into RB, uh, new OBG and RB, uh, uh, and add free list method. RB new ob uh, OBG method gets called whenever you allocate objects. Any single objects, when it gets allocated in Ruby, that method gets called. Whenever uh, objects get free, that method gets called. And it basically, it, it not only these two methods, but it, it, it basically hooks into a bunch of other methods as well to get that profiling data. Uh, and uh, the traces, traces, they call called traces. traces. Traces can be added to pretty much any C function call. Problem with that is this is not cross-platform. Cross and uh, official version does not work with 1.9. It is, and uh, mostly no new development for, for a while now. And it needs a hosted uh, web-based visualizer. So these are the bunch of problems that are there with memprof. Uh, good stuff is that it, it uh, dumps heap and stack at JSON, so you can use uh, pretty much other tools as well to visualize your heap and stack. And I fixed up uh, memprof for working with 1.9. I had to, yeah, next, next we'll talk. What it took to run memprof on 1.9? 
I totally ripped out uh, trampolines, basically, because it's like the, the binary, uh, uh, when the code that is doing the, mo modifying the Ruby binary in memory, it's like, it's non portable, and I did not really understand it, truth, truth be told. So I, I just uh, removed the trampolines, and, and I had to patch up Ruby a bit to, to get the data. And another thing is that between 1.8 and 1.9, the inter internal data structures have changed significantly like R array or R string, they have all changed significantly. So I had to modify all of that stuff. And there's a new CE API to walk the object space, which is even based, even based. Uh, okay, so we're gonna talk, we, uh, just uh, demo time for memprof and also how you can use memprof to track your leaks. Okay, so, This is the same application. Everybody remembers the leaky code, right? All it, it did was leak code, uh, leak memory actually. So yeah, that's all it does. So what you need to do, we, we require memprof and we require leaky code and then, uh, sorry, we are loading that library and we are starting memprof. You have to start memprof so that those instrumentations that, that I had to put in Ruby to collect the data are in place. By default, no, no, no uh, profiling data is gathered by a memprof, actually. You have to enable it. And so it, th that's done by this line. And then you start allocating, then you c collect stats, then you do gc.start uh, and see how many objects got freed, and then you do memprof stats again, and then start collecting, and then you print the stats again. So let's run it. Uh, okay, so this is, the, this is the program. I'm gonna run it, oh, sorry. I'll have to, okay, so this is a, a, a modified Ruby. It's, it's not the standard 1.9.2 which has those instrumentations in place. I'm gonna use that rather than standard uh, Ruby. And yeah, so it's telling you, let's, let's go back to code a bit and see what stats does. <laughs> What stats does is, uh, it tells you the allocations that has happened after start was called, and the line number and the file number, where the most of the memory was allocated after you call GC the uh, mem memprof the start. So you can see that it's telling you that on li line number te uh, 10, there were 22,000 uh, objects created actually, a string object basically. So if you go to leakycode.rb, and you can just say, yeah, so this is where the leak is happening. So it can tell you where the leak is happening exactly. And it's, in a way, much more useful than, than other tools. Then after GC, some ob uh, objects collected, and then before, af before GC, after GC, we did it a bunch of time, but you can see that it's, there's a leak on line number 10. So this is about using a stats API, then th there's another way to use, uh, get the, the data is using uh, memprof.track. It's again, uh, what it does is, is like, it, it, it's basically a short form of doing uh, memprof.start and then print the stats. It's, it's a way to wrap that in a block so that when the block exits, uh, when the block starts, it starts the memprof stats tracking and then when it exits, it prints the stats. So if I ra run this, uh, it's pretty simple again. So you can see that 100 uh, module objects were created on that line number, 100 uh, floats were created, 100 uh, strings were created. Line numbers are important as well when you are doing mem pro uh, memory profiling to know where exactly the leak is coming from. So, yeah, and uh, I'm not gonna show how to do uh, like uh, uh, memory profiling of a, a large Rails application because memprof as it stands for 1.9 is still, I'm still hacking on it, I'm still <laughs> working on it. I hope to release a gem soon and then I'll see how it works. Last thing we're gonna talk about is memprof.dump all, which basically uh, dumps the entire heap to a JSON file. And, uh, yeah, and that is what, sorry. Let's get rid of older object.
create some object this object holds references to some other another object and then then stores this in a, in a, in a class variable if you run this with Ruby sample uses yeah, it printed that <coughs> the JSON file is a little big Not that big. Wow. <laughs> Emacs, come on. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So I had JS JS2 modern on, on JSON documents, so probably that's why it was taking a while to load. Uh, you can see here if you uh, right now it's like pretty raw. Cannot use it for 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 doing the entire for figuring out where exactly the leap uh, the leak is. But the the web-based visualizer fortunately was open sourced uh, uh, two days back. I've been talking to Aman and uh, and and this you can take this JSON, dump it there, and you can get uh, you can make sense, start making sense out of it where the objects are, uh, where the leak is coming from. Here you can see, I can show you like uh, what kind, the object IDs and who is holding reference to what object, all that is recorded in this JSON that can be used and you can pretty much figure out wh where the leak is coming from. Uh, this work will have to wait so that we can use it on, on a website and you can see, see it in a more user friendly fashion. Future of these changes, we'll be releasing fork version. I, I don't know how it's going to be after RubyCon. We'll be compatible with open source memprof.com. And uh, last thing uh, we are going to talk about is uh, gdb.rb, which is which, uh, using which you can poke uh, uh, into a live process and see what object it holds, right? So it's nothing but GDB hooks for 1.8 and some for 1.9. It's written in uh, uh, GDB 1.7 comes with, uh, uh, you can script GDB using Python. So it uses that for doing this. And then uh, thread, uh, thread inspection, for example, does not work with 1.9. It works only for 1.8. And it does not work at all on Mac OS X, actually. So yeah, I'm going to demo GDB.rb, how to use it, and how to poke live processes with it. I have to SSH to a, oh, I'm already SSH, great. We have seen this program, make leak. What it does, it leaks strings. That's all it does. Same as we saw it earlier here. So there's nothing new there. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to connect to this process. So we'll have to use RVM sudo because uh, you need sudo access to connect to a live process. And I'm using RVM, so I have to do this. And then, yeah, I'm connected to this process. Now, I have a bunch of uh, commands here that I can uh, execute and see what, how many objects and what objects are there. Ruby objects, yeah. It's telling us there are 47,000 strings and complex struct, blah, blah, blah. You can see, uh, how many class objects are there? Bunch, uh, sorry, how many, uh, the objects by class, then, uh, then you can see uh, like nodes, I think so. Yeah. And uh, if you're using Ru Ruby 1.8, it, it can uh, also show a uh, backtrace of uh, uh, each thread that, that's live and you can do all that, but with 1.9, that's, that's not possible. So uh, that's pretty much about it. And uh, yeah, we have done that. And yeah, before I wrap up, uh, if you are 
using Rubinius. Rubinius has pretty much pretty excellent uh, CPU and profile, uh, CPU and memory profiling API. The, the CPU profiling is excellent. Memory profiling again it uses client server architecture so that you can connect to processes and get the data. It's beautiful. Uh, with JRuby, you can use the your J Java visualizer. I didn't had great great success with it, but I'm not talking about that them because I wouldn't do justice to them. They, they, they take their own time to do proper research and, and, and report. So I encourage you to check out uh, Rubinius profiling API. These are the resources. The one that I want to point out is like if you are uh, writing a profiler is this one, this Hippy uh, profiler, which basically is a, it's a Python profiler. It talks about how to go about doing a uh, client server uh, architecture or, or how to ensure that profile data does not poison the, the 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 application that you are profiling, and uh, there's another uh, uh, memory profile which was presented last year, which Koichi provided me a link for it, and 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 it's here, and that's it. Thank you.